cut it short. Good morning. We're learning Masechus Subastaf Nun Tes, and we're starting 10 lines from the bottom at the two dots. We had said in our Mishnah, there was a machlokas in regards to Tutanoim about Hamosar, the extra proceeds that a woman brings into a marriage. If a husband is makdish it, so we saw there was a machlokas. Some say, yes, the extra money beyond what he is obligated to give her back. So here's the flow. She makes a minimum wage, $15 an hour, whatever minimum wage is. And she brings it into the marriage. And then he uses that money and circles it right back to her by giving her parnasa, whatever the case may be, by feeding her. So then the Gemara says that there's a machlokas here. Let's discuss this one sheet of Hamosar, Rav Meir Omer Hektish. Rav, Mo, Rav Meir says that it in fact is Hektish. Bottom of Nun Chesimut base, 10 lines from the bottom. Amos Kadush. When is it that this... Um, that this money, the extra money, the Mosar, when is it that it becomes Kadosh, according to Rav Meir? So the Gemara responds with a Machlok HaSamurai. The Gemara says, Rav Shmuel Damri Tarvai Mosar La'achar Misa Kadosh, only after the wife dies. That's when the extra money that she makes is going to become Kadosh. Rav Adabar Ava argues and he says, Omar, Mut, uh, Mosar Mechaim Kadosh. It actually becomes Kadosh even while she's still alive. So we're going to analyze this machlok as Havi bar Rav Papa b'mai. Rav Papa was wondering, what is the case that we're dealing with? Ilema, if we're talking about a case scenario where the husband was b'ma'alala mezonos, u'ma'alala ma'akesef l'tzorcheha, that the husband was in fact paying her food, and as well he was giving her ma'akesef l'tzorcheha, a hundred kesef for her money. This is uh, petty cash, it's spending money. If he's giving her food and spending money, so then my time at demand omar lachar misa kadosh. Why is it that the Mosar, that the extra money, only becomes Kadosh after her death? He's already allocated to her all of the things that he's obligated to give her, Mizonos and spending money. She's good. So if there's an extra $500 per month, why can't that become Kadosh in her lifetime? That's a kash against Rav Adabar Ava. Uh, that, that's a kash against Rav and Shmuel, who said that it's only after Misa. What if it's a case where he doesn't give her food? And he doesn't give her any spending money, the flip side. If that's true, then my time at demand Damar Mechaim Kadosh. Then, of course, it's the case that why would he then say, why would anyone hold that we have to wait until she dies for it to be Kadosh? So the Gemara responds, and again, let's ask our question. Rav Meir was of the opinion that when a husband is Makdish, the income of his wife, the Mosar, the extra money she brings in, when does it become? Um, when does it become Kadosh? Olam says the Gemara, what's our case? The Mailala Mizonos, where he's only doing part of his responsibilities. Yes, he gives her mizonos, he gives her food. However, the ain ma'alala mo'akesef letzorcheha. But he is not giving her what she deserves in regards to spending money. And then our machlokes is as follows. Rav Shmuel Sabre, Rav and Shmuel are of the opinion that tiknu mizonos tachas ma'aseyodeha. That when we feed her, that is supposed to correlate to her ma'aseyodeha, to the income that she provides. And mo'akesef, the actual spending money that he gives her, is Tachas Mosar, is in order to replace the extra income after he pays out the food and the, and the spending money. The Cheban in this case, and since the loka Yahivla Ma'akesef, because here he's not giving her the requisite spending money that she deserves, Mosar did have it. So therefore, the Mosar becomes his. He's not paying out to her, so therefore the, the money is his. And Ravada Bar Ava learns a little differently. Ravada Bar Ava Sabar, Tiknu Mizonos Tachas Mosar, not like Rav and Shmuel said. Mizonos is to correspond to Mosar, to the extra monies. Umakesef Tachas Maiseyadeha. And really, the extra spending money is meant to correlate to the husband's, to the money that she gives to her husband, which is the Maiseyadeha. And then the logic uh, is employed as follows. Because he is giving her mezone, as we established two lines from the bottom on the base, because he's giving her mezone, therefore, Mosar di Dehabe. And therefore, the Mosar is considered his, and that's why it can become Kaddish. What is the fundamental machlokas between Ra Rav and Shmuel on one side and Rav Ada Bar Ava on the other? The Gemara says as follows, Mar Savar, one of them is of the opinion, when he's going to pay her, one the two things that have to be aligned are the two things that are most common. And therefore, Mizonos, what she has to give her, and my Seyodeha are offsetting one another. That makes perfect sense. Umar Savar, the other sheet holds, it has to be two things that are fixed in their prices. What are those two things? Or my Seyodeha income is fixed. And uh, as well, the Gemara says the Ma'akesef, he knows how much he's going to be giving her for spending money. Those two items are fixed. And that's the core of the Machlokas between them, that one is obligated to, um, not one is obligated, but that when one takes the Mosar and turns it into 
uh, hectish, that it happens at a particular time based on this machlokes of Rav and Shmuel on one side who say that it only becomes Kadosh after her death, and Rav Adabar Ava who says that it only happened, that it happens even while she's alive. The Gemara has a problem with this. We're about 10 lines down on Nuntesim at Aleph, and the Gemara questions, Mesve, Tiknu Mizonos Tachas Mase Yodeha. So this goes against uh, one of the Shitas that we saw, because the Brisa that we have over here says that Mizonos corresponds to Mase Yodeha. That goes against the Shita, who says that they go against the Mosar. So the Gemara responds, you're right. Ema Tachas Mosar Mase Yodeha. We could understand this Brisa as referring not to the Mase Yodeha alone, but to the Mosar, any extras that may remain afterwards. So that question uh, was tried and failed. Let's try again. Toshma, 12 lines down. Here we see a link between Mo'a Kesef, the spending money that he's obligated to give her, and Ma'aseya Deha Shela, and the, um, you can take whatever you need, and Ma'aseya Deha Shela, and her salary. So we see the link is that way and not the other way. So says the Gemara, it must be Ema, Mosar Ma'aseya Deha Shela. We're only talking about the Mosar. We're only talking about the extra money that is beyond what he's obligated to give her. The Gemara says, it says on that brisa, umahi osalo. What is it that she gave him? Mishkal chamesh slime, chamesh slime, shtei biyehuda. It's a five slime, a shesi biyehuda. It's five slime of a, of a particular fabric. So this as well is a problem because we see that there is a link here in regards to the money that she's received. So the Gemara responds, third of the way down, hachi kamar masiyadeh. We're trying to figure out the math. We know how much she makes every month. We know how much we have to give her. So let's do the math. If she makes $100 a month, so good. That's her monthly uh, stipend that she makes from working at whatever office in the city. She makes $60 in, she needs $60 in food. So then the balance is only 40. He gives her $30 a month in spending money. She's left with 10. The 10 is the Mosar. So we need all of this for the math. So the Gemara says, how does the math work? And the Gemara responds, Mishkal, that's when the Bryce was talking about. Mishkal, Chamesh Lam Shesi Bihuda, Shane Eser Slim, Big Galil. So that's what the Gemara is saying. We're just trying to calculate all of the uh, all of the Mosar. And then it can happen, then it can happen that it's hectic even in her lifetime. Let's just review because it's a little subtle here. The Gemara basically has a machlokas within Rav Meir. Rav Meir in our Mishnah was of the opinion that if a person is Maktish the Mosar, the extra proceeds of his wife, when does it become hectic within the camp of Rav Meir? And according to Rav and Shmuel, it becomes hectish only after she dies. According to Rav Adabar Ava, it becomes hectish even during their lifetime. And their fundamental machlokas is whether or not we link things that are shchiach or if we link things that are kais, things that are fixed in price. And according to one, we link mizonos and maseyadeh because they're common. And according to another, we link maseyadeh and mo'akesef because those things are kais. That brings us to a, uh, a psak discussion. And the Gemara says a third of the way down, Omar Shmuel, Halacha ki Rav Yochanan Hasanlar. What did Rav Yochanan Hasanlar say? So if we were to look back in our Mishnah, we would see that Rav Yochanan Hasanlar was of the opinion, this Mishnah is on the top of Nun Chesimit Beis. Rav Yochanan Hasanlar was of the opinion that if a husband were to be Makdish the Mosar, what would the din be in such a case? He says that it doesn't become hectic at all. We've been discussing Shitas Rav Meir. But here, Rav Meir is argued by Rav Yochanan Hasanlar. Rav Yochanan Hasanlar is of the opinion that if a husband is maktish, the extra monies of his wife's salary, that it stays chulen. And Shmuel seems to hold a Rav Yochanan Hasanlar. The Gemara is bothered by that. Asks the Gemara, Umi uh, Omar Shmuel Hachi, does Shmuel really hold that we uh, hold like Rav Yochanan Hasanlar? How can you say that we hold that way? Konam shani o If a woman says that she's making a konam, a konam is a very high level type of promise. And if she's making a konam that says that shani ose against that which I make for you. So if uh, a wife says, I know that I make $100 a month, I'm making a konam, I'm making a promise that you're not allowed to access that money. So the halacha is, the husband doesn't have to be made for that because it doesn't matter. She's not allowed to restrict her income from her husband. That's the din. The din is that her income belongs to her husband. So, However, Rabbi Akiva, Omer Yafer, Rabbi Akiva says we are of the opinion that he should do hafara. Because maybe there will be extra monies. And the monies that she puts under a konam may not apply to the principal, but it will apply to the extra. So therefore, Rabbi Akiva says that even if a woman were to say, konam shani ose a 
woman says, I'm making a konam that you, my husband, should not get any of my income, doesn't apply to the principal, but it may apply to the ha'adafa, to the extra. Reb Yochanan ben Nuri holds a little bit different. Amar Yafer, yes, the husband still should be Yafer. He still should nullify the shvua that she made, but for different reasons. Shema Yagarshena, Bitehei Asr Lachzor. Maybe our concern is that they'll end up getting divorced. And because of her commitment, because of her konam to say that I don't want to give you my money, they could never get remarried because she's not allowed to give her income, which is a violation of the marriage laws. So that's what Rav Yochanan ben Nuri says. What is Rav Yochanan ben Nuri? Uh, how, do we, who do we paskin like? And the Gemara says halfway down, Va'amar Shmuel, Halacha ki Rav Yochanan ben Nuri. So now we have a problem. And here is the problem articulated by the Rishonim. The problem is that Shmuel, the same Shmuel, said we hold like Rav Yochanan, uh, like, like, like Rav Yochanan Hassan Lar in our Mishnah, that a man cannot make the Mosar, the extra monies of his wife, into Hekdish because it's a futuristic thing. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, how much money she's going to make. However, over here, he does allow for the uh, concern of something in the future taking place. This is referred to in Halacha as Dabr Shalom Bala Ola. In our Mishnah on the top of Nun Chesimid Beis, Rav Yochanan Asanlar seems to say, we cannot make a decision now about the future, about the unknowns. Yet Rav Yochanan ben Nuri in this price see it says, we are concerned about her comments for the future. So we have a stira between the two Shmuels. Shmuel in our Mishnah seems to be of the opinion that we are not concerned about Dabr Shalom Bala Olam. Shmuel over here in this b'risa about the konam shani osa, where she says she wants to restrict her payments from her husband. There, we are concerned about davar shalom olam. So which one is it? And the Gemara responds halfway down with a whole bunch of different answers to understand Shmuel. And the Gemara says as follows. Ki Shmuel halacha kerev Yochanan ben Nuri when is it that Shmuel says that the halacha is like Rav Yochanan ben Nuri? That the halacha is that we are concerned about the, sh- the, the future. That's only Laha Adafa. That's only talking about extra monies that are left over after we pay her out whatever she's deserved as a wife. And then the Gemara says, if that's true, that it's Laha Adafa, then that's what Shmuel should have said. The lema, halacha Rav Yochanan ben Nuri, Laha Adafa, just say what you mean. Or, inami halacha ketana kama, or inami halacha kreb akiva. But what you said doesn't make sense to say that halachas like Rav Yochanan Ben-Nuri, you don't even mean that, Shmuel. It's only like Rav Yochanan Ben-Nuri in a specific scenario when we're referring to Ha'adafa, to the extra monies, but not to the principal. That's not really the shita of Rav Yochanan Ben-Nuri. So therefore, we don't really have a good answer. Gemara then responds, Elam Rav Yosef, Konomos Kamris. You want to say that we're really, we're talking about a konam, we're talking about this high-level type of promise? Shiny Konomos, because Konomos are very powerful in the following way. Because with a konam, a person can forbid his friend's fruits on himself. Therefore, adam makdish davar shalob ala Konam uh, is basically more powerful. And because a konam is more powerful, so therefore you can't ask a question from a konam. That brisa is unique. Really, Shmuel holds that we don't allow for the concerns of davar shalob ala in the future. This brisa is a chiddush. This brisa, Rav Yochanan Minur is talking about a konam. Konam is not regular, uh, regular halacha. It's different. So then the Gemara says, Amar le'abai, hold on one sec. Bishlama, I could understand, says the Gemara, Adam Oser, uh, Adam, I have to teach right now, so we'll talk later, okay? The Gemara says, Bishlama, we understand Adam Oser, Peros, Peros, Chavero, Allah, that I could understand that a person is going to forbid his friend's fruit on himself. Shekane Adam Oser, Peros, Aval, Chavero. I could understand because I am able to forbid uh, that on myself. I'm able to forbid it on everyone. The sun is uh, staggering. I'm making the computer get a little trippy here. So not much to do, okay? So that's what the, the Gemara says. I could understand, says Abaye. Bishlama. Sorry, I lost my spot here. What? Yeah, I just have to find it in the Gemara. So the Gemara says, Bishlama Adam Oser Peros Chavero Allah. Shekin Adam Oser Peros Peros of Shel Chavero. I'm allowed to answer that on myself, no problem. But ye Oser Dabr Shalob al Olam al Chavero. But to say something that hasn't happened yet in the future, that it can be, um, that it can be Dabr Shalob al Olam, that's not true. That's not true. So what really what the Gemara is asking is you've made a link in regards to a konam, in regards to these, these commitments. What was the link that you made? That just like I can offer my friend's food on myself, so too there's davar shalom bala olam. And Abai is like, what is the link between those two things? That's the Mayan Shemitah Yitzel Har Sinai. Those things are not, are not correlated at all. El Amar of Hunabre, the Rabbi Yoshua, Hunabre, the Rabbi Yoshua, responds with a third answer. The Gemara says, Belmeres, Ikachu, 
uh, that really says the Gemara, she's sanctifying her hands to the one who made her. Ooh, mucho better. The Gemara says that we're sanctifying. She's basically saying that my hands, HaKadosh uh, Baruch Hu made my hands, I'm sanctifying everything of my hands. The Adayim is Nehu Ba'olam. Her hands are in this world. It's not a din of Dabr Shiloh Ba'olam. She's talking about her Maisei Adah, and she has hands, and therefore we are allowed to believe her, her Kona. It says the Gemara, V'chika Amra Hachi, when she says this, Mimikadsha, does it really actually work if a woman says that my, my hands exist, therefore everything off of my hands becomes holy? That's not true. It's not true because she has a shibu to her husband. She's obligated to give her maiseyada to her husband. Says the Gemara, you're right. What's the case? She says, when it is that we will get divorced, then my maiseyada are makudash. Says the Gemara, that doesn't work. Right now, she's married. She's making a condition about something she has no control over. She doesn't get to govern the divorce. That's not how it works. So therefore, she can't make a condition like that. So, Amr Abiloy, Alamalo, why not? We have a precedent for that in Halakha. Ten lines from the bottom. Let's say a man says the following to his friend. He says, I'm about to sell you a field. And when I buy it back from you, I'm going to buy it back from you in a few months. When I buy it back from you, why can't I be mocked as shit right now? Says the Gemara, of course it would be Maktish. Says the Gemara, no, absolutely bad comparison. The comparison of the case of the field to this woman who's talking about the fact that her hands are Makudash and she wants to be Maktish, her hands doesn't work. Maski Flor of Yermia. Me, dummy. Are these two cases comparable? Hasam biyado lehaktisha. In one case, it is within his property, property to be Maktish in. I'm about to sell you a field. I haven't sold it to you yet. I could be Maktish that field right now. Because I can be mocked this field right now. I can be mocked this shit when I get it back from you in six months. <laughs> However, that's the deal. That's the deal. He's going to buy it back, whatever the case is. But right now it's in his rishu. So he can say, I'm going to buy it back from you in a while. And then when, when I buy it back from you, uh, then I then the deal is that it's going to be considered kadosh. However, hacha by the woman, she has no capacity to get herself divorced. So there is no comparison between a man who owns a field where he has control over what's happening, and a woman who can't control her divorce, and she doesn't have control over what's happening. Hello, Damya, really our case is only comparable to this field that I already sold to you. I don't have it in my possession anymore. That if I already sold you the field, so then, then I cannot sanctify it. And maybe that's comparable to our case of the woman who says that my, my handiwork is going to be But even here, the Gemara rejects this as well. Maski flora papa. No, me dummy, these cases are not comparable. Possum over there, gufa uperos biyado de lokeach. There, I already sold you the field. Not in my possession anymore. I already sold you the field. So if I sold you the field, then it's not in my power to do. But hacha gufa biyada hava. But here, in regards to the woman, her body is still her body. Even though you're right, she has no control over the divorce, but it's still her body. The payros don't belong to the seller anymore. He sold it to the lokeach. So therefore, the Gemara says yet again, Hello, Damya, our case is really only comparable to the following. Elo, to the following. Leomer lechavero, turning to the top of Nun Testament base. A man says to his friend, we're trying to thread the needle. We tried the case where he owns it. Now he's about to sell it. We tried the case where he already sold it. That wasn't comparable. Let's try a case where he gives over his property as collateral. So I'm giving this to you as collateral. I'm still the owner. You're just holding it as collateral. That if in fact, when I redeem it, when I pay you back, then the food is going to be, the field, whatever the items are, are going to be considered kadosh. Maybe that's comparable to our case of the woman. Says the Gemara, Maski Flor of Shisha Bereder of Edi. No, it's not. Me dummy. Is that really comparable? Hasam Biyad Dosa. There, in regards to the field that's held as collateral, he always has the capacity to redeem it. It's a collateral. Here's what I asked you to hold this for. Here's the money. Give me back my field. He always is still really the primary owner. However, Hacha with her, in she doesn't still, she does not control the ability to break off her own marriage. So therefore, we have to try yet again. That if I give you this collateral, but I can't take it back at any time that I want, like we previously suggested, but rather I can only take back the collateral after 10 years. 
Maybe that case is similar to our case of the Isha. So 10 years later, when I redeem it, it will be Kadosh. But still, here too, eight lines down, Nun Testament base. The mask of Laravashi, Midami. These cases of the Mashkanta in the case of the woman are not similar. Awesome in the case of the Mashkanta, the Chol HaPachos, in 10 years, he knows he's getting the field back. But Hacha over here, says the Gemara, in our case of the Isha, Ein Biyado Lagar Olam. So this answer is just not working. This answer of she's going to be makdish or her maisei adev through her handiwork doesn't work. Says the Gemara, Elo Amar Ravashi. Ravashi says, Konamos Kamis. We're going back to another fundamental answer. You're trying to ask from Konamos. Konamos are different. Shiny Konamos. The Kedushas Haguf Ninhu. Uchid Rava. Konamos are the status of Kedushas Haguf. What does this mean? To Amar Rava. Rava says, Hekdesh Chametz V'Shichror. If we have hektish, if we have chametz, or if we have shichrur, three things that go through massive transitions. Hektish can be that this animal used to be eligible for me to pay you back, but I made it hektish. So Betsy the cow used to be my mode of payment for you. Betsy was just muktash, and now you cannot take that animal. So what's the din? The din's on me. I have to still pay you back in another way with the equivalent of what I owed you. Chametz too. You're allowed to take my Cheerios as form of payment. You asked me on the wrong day. Today's the 16th of Nissan. I don't own any Cheerios. So I owe you something else. The Shifror, let's say that I'm going to give you a slave, but I'm a Shachra, the slave. So I have to pay you back in another way. Mafkin mi Shibu, those items are no longer to be used as forms of payment. So it says the Gemara, Venik Deshu Mehashta. Maybe, therefore, she is able to say the same thing. Maybe she's able to say, hey, listen, you don't really have control. It's my money, but maybe it's a shibud like the other things. You're not allowed to have my salary. So says the Gemara, you're right. Really, she is allowed to do that. She is allowed to say that that which is mine, my 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 si adeha, I don't want you to have. However, al muha rabbanon, the shibude de baal, the chachamim, al muha means it makes stronger. Al muha rabbanon, the rabbis made stronger the shibud to the baal, meaning the fact that she has to give her money, her my si adeha to the husband, stronger than what she is able to do verbally. We don't want her to be able to remove her pay, her pay, her salaries from her obligations to give it to her husband. So this is a long-winded answer in regards to Shmuel, the Siro within Shmuel. We saw two Shmuels, one that says that she believes in Dabr Shalom, that we believe in Dabr Shalom, and one that does not. And we went through various answers to try and explain. And Bikitzer, the Gemara's conclusion is that really a woman could be Makdish her Maisei Adeh from her husband, but we don't want her to, so the Chachamim didn't allow it. The rest is much easier. Uh, and the, the new Mishnah writes about a third of the way down on Testament Bays. Uh, these, these are the Mishnahis that you should not go home with. This is what the Mishnah writes. These are the activities, these are the uh, malachos, the work that a wife has to provide for her husband. Tochanos, she has to grind flour. The ofa, she has to bake. Umechabsos, umechabeses, she has to do laundry. Umevasheles, she has to cook. Umenika espina, she has to nurse her children. Matzas lomita, she has to make the beds. The osebitsemer, and she has to do work with wool. Careful what uh, which parts of the daf you share. You're better off sharing the more complex parts of the first daf than the easier parts of the second part of the daf. Now, what if What if they're of means? They bring in one maid into the house. So which of her obligations fall away? So says the Gemara, if she has one maid, then the obligations that fall off of her plate is lo tochenes or lo ofev lo mechabeses. The three most difficult things. You're not allowed to, you're not allowed she doesn't have an obligation anymore to be tochenes, to grind flour. She doesn't have to bake anymore. And most critically, she doesn't have to do laundry. Now, remember that laundry then was not a Tide Pod in a machine. It was a washboard standing at the base of the river. Whole different world of laundry. Now, they didn't do laundry as frequently. Maybe they needed to, but they didn't. And it was just much more complex. Now we complain about laundry, but really it's very, very easy. But she was no longer obligated to do that with one shift. What if Stein? What if she had two shvachos? So then what falls off her plate? Ein mevasheles ve'emenikas benon. Then she doesn't have to cook and she doesn't have to nurse her child. What about Shalosh? Very wealthy family. They bring in three maids. Ein matzah salamita. She doesn't have to make the beds. Ve'ein osibet semer. She doesn't have to make wool. Arba, what about four? Yosheves bekatadra. She could sit on the lazy boy, put the feet up on the ottoman, all is well and good. What? Says the Mishnah, that's not good. Even if she had a hundred people serving her, still, she has to still work with wool. She still has to have a, a hobby. She has to have something that she does. Because when one is bored, it leads to zima, it leads to inappropriateness. 
Rashbag Omer, Afa Madiris Ishomilasos Malacha. Even if a man says, I love you so much, I hereby make a nether that you're not allowed to work, doesn't work. Yotzi Vitin Ksuba. Wow. He has to divorce her and give her a ksuba. You're not allowed to say that. Why? Bad for the wife. Shabbatala Mevili de Shiamu. Because Batala leads to Shiamum. And Rashi here defines Shiamum as Shigaon. It will drive you crazy. Too much free time is not good for anybody. That's what the Mishnah says. The Gemara is bothered by a technical piece. You think this woman herself is going to do the grinding. The grinding machines were huge. It was not run by the average person. They needed to leverage the laws of physics. They had in the grind a long pole, and they pushed a long pole from the outside of the pole. It was hard work. Two-thirds of the way down. The Gemara said, you think she was grinding? She's responsible for making making sure that it gets ground. They had the small hand-ground mills um, you know, that they had in their home. That was easier to use. She has to make sure that it gets done. No, it's, it's his money, yeah. Says the Gemara, must listen to But this is not like Rabkhia. The Tani Rabkhia. Ain Isha Elaliyofi. A woman is only for her beauty. Ain Isha Elalabanim. And a woman is only for raising children. The Tani Rabkhia. Ain Isha Elatakhshite Isha. A woman is only there to be adorned in jewelry. The Tani Rabkhia. Arote Sheya Adenis Ishto. One who wants to beautify his wife. What should he do? Yalbishana Klay Pishtan. She should wear linen. I wrote to Yalvin Esbito, one who wants to whiten the complexion of his daughter, Yachilena Efrochim, chicks. She he should feed her chicks, says the Gemara, and as well Lapirka. And he should also feed her milk when she is Samuk Lapirka, when she's close to her years of development of puberty. That is a time to feed her milk in order to whiten her complexion. I'm not aware of any scientific things that make this true. I don't know. I don't know. And if anybody knows, please let me know. We're going to stop right here. We'll be back together Sunday night, starting with the two dots of Umanika Esbina, wishing you all a beautiful day and a beautiful Shabbos. Amen.